Good evening and welcome to State of Business on Art Television. I am Tamiru Nimsa. Let's have a look at the headlines. Asia Pacific Retailers Conference kicks off in Colombo. Transparency International informs of Election Commission regulation violations. News in detail. The Asia Pacific Retailers Conference and Exhibition 2024 commenced in Colombo on Tuesday with a dynamic welcome ceremony that gathered top leaders and innovators from the retail industry. Organized by the Sri Lanka Retailers Association in collaboration with the Federation of Asia Pacific Retailers Association, the event features a knowledge forum, exhibition and B2B networking sessions held at BMICH. The conference explores the evolving retail landscape, focusing on how the industry is transforming beyond simple transactions into a force that drives societal cultural and economic shifts. Retail, which contributes to 14% of Sri Lanka's GDP and employs 15% of its workforce, is rapidly expanding. APRCE 2024 aims to facilitate discussions on investment opportunities, connecting local vendors with international retailers and exchanging knowledge to enhance retail as a key economic driver. The event features over 350 foreign delegates and emphasizes how the retail industry can become a catalyst for positive societal change. Key sessions at APRCE will focus on retail's potential to promote community development, inclusivity and sustainability, featuring case studies and innovative strategies. These discussions will highlight how retail can make a lasting impact on both business success and societal well-being. The Executive Director of Transparency International Sri Lanka, Nadishani Pereira said, that the announcement made to provide certain reliefs to the people is an effort to promote candidates using state assets. She said that the writing of a farmer's debt relief provided to fishermen, salary hikes for public servants are observed as efforts to manipulate the mind of the voters. Nadishani Pereira said this speaking at a press conference held in Colombo recently. The government announcing various reliefs and other benefits targeting different groups of voters. We know the, the decision, for example, to write off the debts of the farmers, certain subsidies and other this type of support being extended to uh, fishermen, to the estate workers' salaries, to the public officials. We are not against people receiving any form of benefit from the state. Of course, we would welcome that, and people are in dire need. But using this time, right now, to announce this is you abusing that power you have, because by that, you are indirectly promoting a candidate. And that is wrong, that is an abuse, and you are influencing the voter. As voters, we need to also understand how come these benefits are being announced right now, isn't it a way to manipulate my free thinking in you know, my ability to discern about who is the actual leader we want for this nation? So the citizens also need to be smart enough to understand and not allow their vote, the precious vote, that most powerful thing you have as a citizen in a democratic nation, to be bought by somebody abusing their power. But we are also telling the Election Commission to take stern steps about this. Indian film actor famous for playing the role of Prince Siddhartha in the film Sri Siddhartha Gautama, Gagan Malik, initiated a pilgrimage of Indian Buddhists to Sri Lanka. The versatile actor and Buddhist activist called on Prime Minister Dinesh Kunwardhana with 65 Buddhist pilgrims from Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh and Telangana at the temple trees in Colombo day before yesterday. Prime Minister Dinesh Gunwardhana welcoming the Buddhist pilgrim group led by film star Gagan Malik said that Buddhism is the strongest bond which binds India and Sri Lanka together. He also said that they are eternally grateful to Indian Emperor Ashoka and his son Arhat Mahindu for giving us the greatest gift of the teaching of the Buddha. Actor Gagan Malik said he is fully committed to propagate Buddhism and work for promoting Sri Lanka in India and the world. He further added that there is a vast potential for Buddhist pilgrim tours as there are millions of Buddhists in India. The team has been brought to Kandy to worship sacred Buddha relic at Dalda Maligavu and later to Anuradhapura. In Anuradhapura, the team has been guided a lot of places which shows the magnificent building constructions by the ancient Sinhalese. Gagan Malik and the team has also worshipped the sacred Sri Mahabodhi.
Stay tuned. We will return after the short commercial break. Welcome back after the break. Recognizing the requirement of empowering women entrepreneurs with the knowledge and resources, Export Development Board has conducted a comprehensive knowledge sharing session as part of the ongoing She Exports program. EDBS on WU has been assisted by the RLIT and SLASCOM with the prime objective of preparing a women card to take entrepreneurs for the global market. Accordingly, RLIT recently conducted a comprehensive knowledge sharing session as part of the ongoing She Exports program which is a long-term capacity-building initiative by the Export Development Board and SLASCOM. During the session, the participants were provided valuable insights into several critical areas of modern technology, which offers scalable cloud solutions tailored to the needs of tech startups. Participants also gained a deep understanding on the areas such as latest technology trends, cybersecurity, and the potential of artificial intelligence and Internet of Things. The EDB SLASCOM She Exports program, supported by industry leaders, is a crucial platform for women entrepreneurs aiming to take their businesses to the next level. It offers a unique opportunity to acquire skills, knowledge and networks necessary to scale up into and compete in an international market. The organizers of the program also invite the tech women entrepreneurs in the ICT BPM sector to expand their horizons, joining with the program, just contacting the Export Development Board. In recognition of World Alzheimer's Month in September and World Alzheimer's Day on September 21st, the Lanka Alzheimer's Foundation, a member of Alzheimer's Disease International, is hosting a series of events to raise awareness about the disease. A press conference to make this announcement was held in Colombo recently. Colombo's iconic Lotus Tower was illuminated in red to symbolize the start of the campaign, drawing attention to the impact of Alzheimer's disease, a specific form of dementia that causes memory loss and cognitive decline. Among the key events organized by the LAF are the Run to Remember, yesterday, a 5km run starting in Colombo, and Memory Walk 2024 on September 14th. Both events aim to emphasize the importance of physical and mental exercise in delaying or preventing dementia. The College of Community Physicians Sri Lanka has joined LAF in its efforts recognizing dementia as a major non-communicable disease. Often under-recognized, dementia is poised to become a substantial public health burden in Sri Lanka, making awareness and support initiatives more critical than ever. The 10th edition of the Colombo International Theatre Festival 2024 concluded last Friday at Elphinstone in Colombo. Indian director Devang Tewari's Jigulu was awarded as the best modern drama in the international category and the best modern drama in the South Asian category, won by Nehal Bhattarji from India for his drama, I Want to Fly Like a Kite. The 10th edition of the Columbia International Theatre Festival kicked off on August 24th and concluded last Friday with a satisfactory gathering of local and foreign theatre lovers. This year's international modern drama competitions included the dramas from Romania, Italy, Iran, India and Poland, Israel, Bangladesh and the USA. The festival was opened with M. Safir's award-winning play, Love and Lockdown. We are really, really proud and happy to be here with all these great people. We know how uh, much effort is needed uh, to do neither small event, but, uh, and we are so happy to be here and be a part. We are really admire how it looks like here. Uh, it's the first time for us to be in Sri Lanka at all. Uh, so we have a really great experience. I want to say that uh, these kind of uh, uh, events are really uh, important uh, in every country, not only in the countries who are small, you are really much bigger than Croatia, but uh, for most people from Sri Lanka said, oh, we are a small country. Uh, maybe you are for this part of the world, a uh, small country, uh, but for us, you are really big and uh, our collaboration means a lot to us. Stay tuned for Stock Update.
trading at Clum Stock Exchange ended on negative notes today. The old share price index dropped 25.31 points to close at 10,775.87 and the S&P SL20 dropped 14.07 points to close at 3,021.57. The turnover was 0 0.4 billion rupees and over 22 million shares were traded. Up next, Star Forex Rates. That's all our news for today. For this and more, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook. Take care and good night.